Whereas once upon a time the best part of any movie were the trailers beforehand, today that honour has fallen to what comes afterwards, namely the secret post credit scene. These have become so popular that if a film that's meant to have one doesn't, fans kick off right there in the cinema. Sometimes though, such movies do have these nuggets of joy but like to keep you waiting for as long as possible, or straight up surprise you with a secret out of nowhere. And then by that point, you're halfway through burning the theatre to the ground to have to bail out of there double time. I'm Summer from What Culture, and this is 10 movies you didn't know had secret post credit sequences. Number 10, Django Unchained. Quentin Tarantino's bloodthirsty spaghetti western sees Jamie Foxx unleash all hell upon Leonardo DiCaprio for over two hours. At one point during the movie, though, a group of slaves are shipped off with Django and are left utterly perplexed as our hero kills his captors and then steals a horse. Far from being ignored, though, this group actually turns up after the film has ended and give their account of what they witnessed earlier on. It's a very nice way to wrap everything up and makes you feel all special inside, like it was a joke just for you and no one else remembered those characters. Number 9. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets Dodgy title that, isn't it? Out of context, it sounds terrible. Straight up terrible. Anyway, during the movie itself, we are treated to Kenneth Branagh's portrayal of Gilderoy Lockhart, a man who lies and cheats his way into a teacher position at Hogwarts before having to face off against nerd hero Harry Potter and eventually lose, blah blah blah. Not only does he lose though, he also accidentally erases his own memory instead of Harry's. This is why after the credits have done their thing, it's revealed that Lockhart has written a biography entitled, Who Am I? Because you know, he wiped his memory and all that. Number 8. LA Confidential Spoiler alert! Kevin Spacey's Jack is killed during LA Confidential. It's a sad moment for everyone, especially as you do warm to him throughout the movie to the point you don't want him to die. So when he does die, it's really sad and all that. Boo hoo, etc. One of his roles in the film, though, is as a consultant for fictional cop show Badge of Honor, which is why during the post credits, you get a sneaky glimpse of a family watching a recent episode and it being dedicated to, wait for it, Jack. Number 7. Lethal Weapon 3 Lethal Weapon 3 opens with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover checking out a car park that's rigged with a bomb. Because the two are morons, they screw the situation up completely and the bomb explodes causing mass damage and distraction. Come the end of the film, clearly nothing has changed. Probably trying to establish that no matter how successful the duo are, they'll always be quite the dysfunctional pair. The scene after the credits shows the cops responding to another bomb alert, once again, failing to deal with it. You can only assume that director Richard Donner had some pretty gnarly demolition footage he just didn't want to waste, while also adding in some extra comedy long after you thought it was all over. Number 6. Constantine You know how a lot of people describe Constantine? They said it was a relative disaster. It's really quite mean. The strangest thing about the movie, however, is how long its post credit sequence is. While most are short and sweet, serving as almost a reward for people who did stick around, here the camera follows Constantine as he visits the grave of his dead apprentice, Chas. Then from nowhere, a winged version of Chas, who looks super pissed off, zooms up into the sky, and that's that. There's no context, no tie-in to the rest of the plot, it just happens with no explanation. So it's pointless. Number 5. Napoleon Dynamite Napoleon Dynamite is great. For some reason though, Fox decided it was necessary to commission a standalone 5 minute sequence that was to be put after the credits. It shows Napoleon's brother Kip getting married as a bunch of weird things happen around him. So not bad. But it's not the quality everything else is and just comes across as out of place. Number 4. The Grey The whole build of The Grey is to a showdown between Liam Neeson and a wolf. And let's face it, that's got box office written all over it. This is why when the movie cuts before this fight happens, people were super mad. Coming to a close just as Neeson is preparing himself to take on the head wolf who has been hunting him for days, the payoff actually comes after the credits have rolled, or at least a tease does anyway. Here, a quick shot shows Neeson leaning up against what you're meant to assume is the beaten body of the beast. It's still breathing, so Peter don't have to get all worked up, and it highlights just how tough Liam is. Number 3. Ferris Bueller's Day Off It's always nice when a movie breaks the fourth wall, and it's even nicer when that fourth wall breaking comes in the form of insulting the audience. I know, right? All this and more happens in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. With the film all but over, Ferris steps back into frame, stares right at the audience, looks baffled before asking, you still here? It's over. Go home! Not only did it highlight that director John Hughes knew his audience down to a T, but it was also a great way to knock them despite every single one paying money to see this. And a large chunk of that went in his pocket. Number 2. Ghost World Movies that like to play with their post-credit scenes are best movies, and Ghost World does this very well. 
Returning to a scene where Steve Buscemi gets attacked by Brad Renfro, this time around the roles are reversed, so that is to say Buscemi gets the upper hand. He punches Renfro in the face and then leaves the store screaming f at the top of his lungs, looking like a right badass. It shouldn't have happened in the actual film as no one would have believed it, but after the fact, hell yeah. Number 1. Zombieland Bill Murray's surprising cameo in Zombieland is made all the better because as soon as he turns up, he's shot and killed by accident. Should you wait around till the end of the movie, however, you do get a bit more Bill. Spouting his final words to Woody Harrelson before he dies, Murray says, in the words of the immortal philosopher John Paul Sartre, uh, au revoir, gopher. Understandably, Harrison just responds with a straight okay, because who's going to understand that? But it's a lovely ending to a lovely film. Know of any other movies that we didn't know had secret post credit sequences? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even come follow me on Twitter at SimonMiller316. I'm Simon from What Culture, and if you've waited this long for a post credits thing, there isn't one, mostly because there's no credits.